It's no surprise Tampa is pretty popular right now. Like, prom queen popular. Ah. And a lot of you moving here right now tend to like or at least want to see new construction homes and often ask me which new home builder is good or which one's bad and which builders I personally like the most. So today, I'm going to do my best to rank them from the bottom of the barrel to the top dog. And I'll also touch on some things to look for, you know, to get the best bang for your buck when searching for your new construction home in the current Tampa market. So stay tuned. Welcome if you are new to my channel and new to me. I'm Adam Morjohn and I make videos all about what it's like living in Tampa, Florida, covering the best neighborhoods and things to do so you can get a real feel for what it's like living here. If you like what you see, hit that subscribe button and ring that little bell because we have a ton of great content to share with you and you're not gonna wanna miss it. And if you're thinking of moving to Tampa, Florida, I am a licensed realtor. So see that number on the screen, give us a call, shoot us a text or send us an email because my team and I would love to help you find the perfect home for you and your family. In order to rank a builder, we need to set some ground rules and understand a few things first. There are different levels of builders and throughout these levels, they target different audiences. For the sake of this video, let's categorize them into four tiers. The first three will be our focus, which will include production builders. And the top tier would be a full custom home where you can design everything start to finish. You will not find a full custom builder in a master plan community, however. So our focus is gonna be on the first three tiers. In ranking these builders, we have to consider builder quality, their reputation, customer service, how they're handling the current market, the price tag. I mean, there's really a lot of variables and it's not so cut and paste. So breaking down these tiers, the lower tier will be your basic quality and usually target first time home buyers. Your second tier, which is your move up builder and typically has a little bit better reputation and you should see a little bit better quality. And then that top tier, uh, tier number three, will be the mid to high level semi custom builder, which will give you the best you can build other than going full custom. So let's really break down each of these levels and give you some rankings with what builders fit in each category. Kicking things off with the lower tier of new builds, some of the common builders here in the Tampa Bay area include Lennar Homes, DR Horton, Ryan Homes, Centex, Casa Fresca, and Starlight. Now most of you have heard the first three, but those last three builders are actually owned by larger builders, but build off of their own names to keep some separation between quality and expectations. So Centex is owned by Pulte, Starlight by Ashton Woods and Casa Fresca by Homes by West Bay. So if there's an expected difference in quality, what can be expected from the tier one builders that, and that's, that's a great question. Typically, with all of the first tier builders, you can expect basic quality cabinetry. Sometimes they don't even come with hardware like handles or knobs, basic flooring options. Uh, most offer at least granite counters in the kitchen, but don't be surprised if they don't include it in the bathrooms. Some of the bathrooms have shower kits versus tile, and there's a good chance you get some smart features in the homes and still well insulated, but a few other items like an appliance package or upgraded nicer window options may lack versus the next tier of home. When choosing a tier one builder, typically these builders are building homes on a schedule. They have a build it and they will come motto. To keep it simple, they don't let you customize the homes as you can with the next two levels but you could typically choose from a handful of pre-selected packages, call it package A, you get brown cabinets and this granite, and B, you get white cabinets and this granite and so on. So while almost everyone wishes they can custom design a home, in this market where we have seen supply chain issues and delays in buildings, these homes are cranking out a few every month and waiting periods for your finished home are much less. Now I don't say this to turn you off from buying a tier one home, there's a lid for every pot, and I honestly think this is a great home for a lot of people for many different reasons. I personally look at every home as an investment choice, so I really look for value or reason to purchase a home regardless of the price point. In saying that, as prices have increased here in Tampa, some of these builders in tier one increase prices a little aggressively and are nearly competing with the next tier, so as a realtor, I always advise my clients to look for the best bang for the buck. Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talk. Sometimes that's simply looking at a nearby community or sometimes that means let's look at an entry level tier two versus a high priced tier one. So let's take a look at the next tier and I'll explain what I mean. Buying new construction is all about understanding processes and understanding what you're buying. So at each tier you can get a few more bells and whistles but understand 
unless you're fully custom building, you're dealing with a production builder and their focus is to build homes and in a timely manner. So on tier one, they're looking to put out a, an affordable product that is practical and is usually targeted at first time home buyers, move down buyers. And honestly, some of them just give you an opportunity to get a lot of square footage at a lower price. With tier two, you start to have options. Some of the tier two builders you can expect in the Tampa Bay area include Pulte, Homes by West Bay, Taylor Morrison, David Weekly, GL Homes, Toll Brothers, and MI Homes. These builders fill the biggest price gap and range of homes in the area ranging from around the high 400,000s to roughly around one and a half million dollars. So what makes this tier different is the home buying process becomes a little more personal. In tier one, you're buying a home more towards the middle of the process where you choose a package, A, B, or C. And in tier two, you're typically buying a home and building from the ground up. See, in tier two, builders usually typically choose a lot. You choose your model and any structural changes you might have. Then about four to eight weeks after you're under contract, you go to a design center and you choose all of your finishes and you get to sit back and watch your beautiful house being built to your specifications. Typically, you have a little bit longer of a build period, ranging from around seven to 11 months, but it's all your choices. In this market, to combat supply chain issues and to prevent delays, some mid-tier builders have incorporated some of the build-outs similar to tier one by choosing finishes, then releasing the home for sale after it starts to go vertical. But for the most part, all builders still have some options of going to a design center still. In tier two, you can expect a step up in quality when it comes to finishes and options. At times, even the base options will be a step up from that top of that tier one. So let me give you a good example of this. Recently, I showed a tier one home that was priced at 550,000 that had granite counters and a few nice upgrades. But then I showed my client a Pulte home, for an example, that came with quartz countertops as its base. And we scooped it up at 520,000. This is an example of looking for the best bang for your buck. It wasn't even comparing apples to apples. And in fact, the entry level tier two, we got far less. Tier two homes have a big range of price, so you can naturally expect a wide range of square footage from roughly 1,700 square foot to upwards of 5,000 square feet. Finishes ranging from basic tile flooring to upgraded wood floors. And in this tier at times, you have the option to raise the ceiling heights. You might have a flex room option where it can be an office or an extra bedroom, or possibly it can give you room to add a third garage. I've seen adding a balcony or adding an outdoor kitchen and massive pocket sliding doors for those of you that like to entertain. Overall, you simply have more flexibility and you get to customize the home just a little bit more because this tier covers the most ground and appeals to most buyers. You always have to look for that best value though. Pro tip, if you're dipping your toes in this tier, take your time while choosing your finishes. Every builder prices items differently and I've seen clients save thousands by just choosing not to install crown molding with the builder and do it with a handyman after the fact. While I will tell you if you wanna make any structural changes, it's almost best to do it as the home is being built because it's nearly impossible to do it and it will cost you a lot more after the fact. Stepping up to the last tier, tier three here, it's actually the smallest tier of the three groups, but everything is as premium as you will get with a production builder. Two quick builders that just fit the profile and you know, top of mind here in Tampa include Arthur Ruttenberg and Biscayne Homes. The first thing you will notice with these builders is that you'll be surrounded by other million dollar homes. While they do build million dollar homes in tier two, many times you'll find that they'll build a million dollar home right next to like a $600,000 home. So there's more of a blended community. Tier three, those communities typically tend to have more exclusivity. The premium finishes in these homes tend to be a little more standard and you'll typically find higher end kitchens, customizations, and premium trim that give it a nice unique look. Tier three builders tend to build on larger lots and offer the highest level of personalization options without going full blown custom, of course. These builders will give you the option to move walls or at least have a handful of options throughout the home to make it more unique. One of my clients recently was looking at Biscayne Homes and he happened to have a big truck with big boy tires. He needed a taller garage and they had the option to raise the entry by a foot to accommodate his truck. You will only find that in this tier. While this sounds pretty custom, it's still a production builder, so there are limitations. While no one can argue that a custom home would be a dream come true to many of us, with a custom home, there's a lot of headaches that you don't have to deal with when buying with a production builder. With a custom builder, you have to hire an architect and you have to make your rounds through the permitting process. 
The build times are typically longer and prices can be more because, well, everything's custom. Most of the time you will hire an interior designer and on and on. With production builders, no matter the level of home, it's all pretty much laid out for you and it's just plug and play and overall it's easy peasy. Without going too far down this rabbit hole because I plan on shooting a video on it soon, I do want to touch on how to choose which home is right for you. As I mentioned before, each home is an investment and no matter the price range, you should do your homework, have the correct expectations of the process and what you're buying and have a plan in place. I have three clients that had a budget of around $300,000 and this is back in 2018. Now, no one knew that prices will be where they are today, but I advise them to look for the best bang for their buck and it happened that DR Horton was selling a 2200 to 2500 square foot home for 300,000 in a great school zone and in the perfect location off the interstate that is surrounded by communities that are all pretty much entry level at that time at 425 to 450,000. I mean, it was like the only $300,000 in the area. My advice was to buy a home and save money. Don't hold that home for more than 10 years though, because every community around that year 13 to 17, that community will have what I call a little ugly phase because some of the homes will start to need maintenance. Well, DR Horton is currently selling that same home still for 575,000 and they are sitting in a great position. Aside from the price gain, which no one could have predicted, they were in a great spot because they bought a home that fit their family and their needs and the location gave them so much more than just a home. This was a great buy. Now using that same story, this same home is being sold now for nearly 600,000 and I can step up in quality and go to maybe to Pulte or Homes by West Bay and a handful of other communities with that same 2,500 square foot home and lock a, a home down in this same price range and possibly less. It's a no-brainer in this scenario. People ask me all the time, rank builders, or ask which is better, my answer is always the same. I can make a case where each builder is a great buy in its own scenario. In 2021, I made a video on what you can buy at 300,000, and DR Horton and Lennar were part of that, you know, what influenced that video. And because we easily sold double digits homes that year under 350,000, well, now that same home is 450 to 475,000 a day, maybe even 500,000. And in my eyes, that home loses its value at that price point and starts to really cross over into tier two pricing. So no matter which tier you fit in, we really love real estate and we really love what we do. So if you have plans on moving to the Tampa Bay area and you want help finding which community will give you the best value or the most customizations, see that number on the screen, give us a call, shoot us a text or send us an email because my team and I would love to help you and your family find your next home. Until that next video, I'm going to catch you later.